Stephen Langford in for Bonte Hill. Joe Shasky, as always, it is the morning roast as we approach the final hour here on this Monday. Hope you all listening had a terrific week weekend. And something that happened was Frank Gore. He's going to sign a one-day contract with the 49ers. Following that will be his retirement for this season. And Mr. Joe Shasky and I are very happy to be joined by Tom Rathman, former 49ers fullback, two-time Super Bowl champ with the 49ers, and of course the running backs coach when Frank Gore was on the team. So, Tom, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, thanks for having me. So, uh, Tom, first question right out of the gate is, Frank Gore, what made him different than the other running backs that you have worked with as a coach? I mean, for me, you know, as a coach, I mean, he was one of the smartest football players that I was around. Uh, Not only was he uh, smart and could pick up things relatively easy, spur of the moment, uh, sideline adjustments, he made all that stuff uh, happen uh, when it was uh, asked of him. Uh, So... And then you talk about just his toughness, you know, durability and toughness. Those are two things that you really don't see from a guy that has played uh, a running back uh, 16 years in the NFL. So uh, he was just a phenomenal player that you knew what you were getting when you put him out on the field. Uh, with Frank, uh, he, was, he was really a pleaser, you know. Uh, you tell him something going into a game or you made a sideline adjustment, I got you, coach. I got you, coach. And you knew that it was going to get done uh, when it appeared in a game. Uh, so just the, being able to uh, rely on him uh, game in and game out through his 16-year career, the six years that I coached him, uh, uh, was phenomenal as an athlete. Tom, I have so much respect for you as a player. I mean, you're talking about toughness. What Ronnie Lott was to defense, you were to offense in terms of toughness and physicality, and you just, you're just one of the all-time favorites of, of 49er fans. And when you call somebody tough, what a stamp of approval. I mean, geez, Louise. Uh, I don't remember ever. I mean, I went to all those games, and I watched every game on the road, obviously on television. I don't ever remember a moment where Frank Gore showed up a teammate, where Frank Gore you know, went crazy on the sidelines or even ripped off his helmet in disgust was he truly that classy at all times because that was what it felt like to me in terms of his character he was like the highest integrity teammate I have ever seen I mean he was so passionate about the game and when things didn't go right uh you know he could uh uh you know slip into a, a deep transit so to speak but uh And then you would know it. But, uh, you know, I got there, you know, I came back to the 49ers after I left uh, the first time I was with the Niners. I came back in 2009. And, you know, Frank Gore wasn't that that guy that you just, you know, described when I first got there. I mean, he was very selfish. And uh, when he didn't get the yards, he'd storm off the field into the locker room, jump in the shower and get out of there. Uh, But, you know, through the six years that I worked with him, he developed into a great teammate, and he's always been a great teammate. Uh, These things that I'm talking about were the passion that he had for the game, and when things didn't go right or his way, you know, he he had a little issue uh, after the game. And, you know, you could get him calmed down by Monday, you know, Monday afternoon. Uh, But uh, phenomenal player, great teammate. Uh, really cared about his uh, teammates, and, and that's that was a, that's the passion that I'm talking about with Frank. Uh, everything that you talk about football, he's got a passion for everything that uh, uh, is related to football. Yeah, that's Mal. It's very profound what you just said right there because I didn't know any of those things. Um, mm. I look at Frank and I just I get so I get sad, like legitimately sad when I see your teams when you played. You guys cashed in on some of those championships, and I know that you wanted more. I'm sure you did. When I look at Frank and Vernon and Justin Smith and Patrick Willis and Navarro and just all those dudes, Staley, and you guys didn't get those rings, and it just it stings because now a lot of these guys are retiring. They're walking away. From from the game, and it feels like the one thing, even though it's a footnote in their career, it feels like the one accomplishment they didn't get. Is, are, have you and Frank ever talked about those final couple of plays at the goal line? Because I'm still ticked he didn't touch the rock there at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, sure we talk about it, you know, and you know when you get to that game, the Super Bowl. I mean, there's nothing like being in that game, you know, when you have an opportunity to play. 
but uh, the worst feeling in the world that you can have, uh, one of them, the worst feelings, is losing that game. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate to have two victories. I was two for two as a player. And then when we played the uh, Ravens uh, in New Orleans, you know, we had a chance there at the end. And you talked about, uh, alluded to the, the last drive that we had the ball. You know, I, yeah, it's tough. I mean, you're inside the five-yard line. Uh, they're playing cover zero, so they got a loaded box. You know, they've got extra helmets in, in, in the box. So when you talk about schematic-wise, I mean, it's not a great scheme to run the ball, you know, when you got two free hitters in the hole. But here again, you got a guy, uh, one of the all time great, uh, Frank Gore, uh, who's uh, never been to the Super Bowl, and give him a chance, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I mean, we had calls on our call sheet. Obviously, the cover zero uh, took us away from the run game, uh, which, you know, in, in, enhanced. The pass game because you got one on one leverage with inside leverage. So, uh, but we didn't get it done. We didn't give Frank a chance, and that's probably the most disappointing thing in my mm-hmm. 31 year as coaching and playing, getting to that game and knowing that you got a guy like Frank Gore who basically got us down there in that scoring position and uh, uh, not really giving him an opportunity. But uh, and that's how the game goes sometimes, you know. Uh, when when you're game planning, so but it's it, you know, I think he'll get over it. But all those athletes that you just talked about, wow, what a tremendous huh. group that you mentioned. You know, name after name that never ended up winning a Super Bowl. They played in a Super Bowl. A lot of those guys that you just talked about, but they never had an opportunity to win a Super Bowl. And there's nothing like winning that game, knowing that you're the best in the league at at that, that particular time. Talking Frank Gore here with two-time Super Bowl champion fullback with the 49ers, Tom Rathman, and of course, 49ers running backs coach from 2009 to 2016. And Tom, we had Scott McLuhan on earlier, and he was talking about Frank Gore's selflessness uh, among the team. And you've been talking about that as well. Is there any particular story or memory that stands out to you that speaks to that selflessness? Well, I mean, every game that he played, you know, I mean, you turn off (laughs) the tape and you know, you watch his pass pro. I mean, he was one of the most dominating pass blockers that I've been around uh, as a coach. And uh, he would literally knock the crap out of the guys when they came in, and he tried to hurt them. And, uh, uh, I mean, it was just, you know, over and over. You saw it every week. But uh, that's who Frank Gore was. And, you know, like I said, you know, he was such a pleaser. He wanted to please his coach so much that uh, he wore it on his sleeve when he didn't. So, uh, uh, But phenomenal player, great toughness, not a tougher player, you know, pound for pound. Uh, I don't think that has ever played the game. You know, Tom, I, I hold you in such high regard. I mean, I really do. The The fact that you were part of the dynasty uh, in the 80s, the fact that you coached on this staff, and your reverence for the history of the team. Well, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about it before, and, and I really, truly respect your opinion. You played with Jerry. You played with, with Steve and Joe and, and, and played under Bill Walsh. And then, obviously, all the young guys that we've been mentioning, the younger dudes, you were part of their coaching staff. So I, I'm, I'm curious – where do you got Frank Gore in terms of 49er lore? You know, John Henry Johnson, Joe the Jet Perry, Roger Craig, your teammate. Ricky Waters was your teammate at one time. Obviously, Frank is there in somewhere. Like, where do you put him in terms of running back? I don't even know if that's a fair question to ask you. I just, I'm curious your, your opinion on this because you studied so much of this history of this team. Well, statistically, I mean, you got to put Frank at the top. I mean, here's a guy that's got 16,000 yards rushing. I mean, he's third of all time in the league. Uh, he's the all-time leading rusher for the 49ers. He had 10 season as a 49er, 16 altogether. So uh, when you talk about answering the bell and, you know, longevity, I mean, I think you got to look at Frank Gore as the number one guy. You know, I've played with Roger in the backfield, and I've got so much respect for Roger Craig and, and his game. Uh, he was a total package, you know, catching the football out of the backfield, running the football, and he had great talent as a runner with those high knees and then uh, just his ability to pass block. And that goes back to Roger's toughness, uh, obviously being a former Cornhusker uh, like myself. (laughs) uh, So, But uh, I would have to say 
you know, I've, I've coached a lot of guys that have been great players that had great years. Garrison Hurst. Yeah. I mean, several years with him. Charlie Garner. We had Charlie Garner for two years. He was sick. Dynamic for the two years that we had him. But those, those guys right there, Frank Gore, Roger Craig, Charlie, Garrison Hurst, I'd rate those guys up there at the top. No question about it. Well, that says a lot coming from you, Tom. Of course, two-time Super Bowl champion with the 49ers, former fullback, 49ers Hall of Famer, and 49ers running backs coach while Frank Gore was a running back. Thanks so much, Tom. Coach, before you go, are you going to be out at Levi's this year? Tell me you're going out onto onto midfield at some point because the the faithful got to give you your just due. You are a luminary of this organization, and I think the fans want to cheer you out. Tell me you're going to get out to midfield at some point this year. I was out there last year. I was there for the Green Bay game. Oh, you were there. There was the the Sunday night game. Yeah, I was an honorary game captain that week. I I totally forgot about that. I said to my wife that if I never have to go to another (laughs) football game in my life, I would be all right with that. (laughs) After doing it for 31 years, you talk talk about, you know, realistically 20 games a year. Yeah. Because of the four four preseason games. Uh, That's a lot of games. And then you talk about the playoffs. Uh, you know, that's probably another season, uh, 16 to 18 games, you know, throughout my career, uh, through the playoffs that, uh, I've been in and just a lot of football. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at right now and, uh, things are going well. And it's really good to see all these players that have come behind me getting the recognition that they deserve. And I told Frank, I talked to him yesterday. I said, you know, you better start getting your speeches ready. So, <laughs> Are you going to uh, induct him? Uh, hey, would he ask you? To be determined. I know, I know we've had conversations of it in the past, uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, man, you're number one badass in 49er history. Tom, thanks for joining us. You know we love you. Okay, I appreciate it, guys. The-